Welcome to the Academy of Neurologic Physical Therapy Stroke Special Interest Group Student Corner. Today we're going to be looking at analysis of gait of a patient post-stroke. My name is Heather Hayes, Assistant Professor at the University of Utah. I am also the Chair of the Stroke SIG and I'm very excited to have my guest today, uh, Lynn Johnson, who will be doing a gait analysis with us today. My name is Lynn Johnson, like Heather said, and I'm a student physical therapist. I am in my third year at the University of South Carolina. Great. So Lynn, um, as you know, we are the movement experts. Gait analysis is a common part of our practice, for, especially for our patients with neurological disabilities. They often have unique gait patterns that we're trying to distinguish and understand what might be their deficits. Gait analysis is a systematic review of human motion or locomotion. The observer, who will be us, assesses body movements, body mechanics, and this allows us an understanding of the activity of the muscles and potential deficits. This analysis, we hope, will be able to aid in our treatment planning and give us a better understanding of the individual's deficits. What we're gonna to use today is the Rancho Los Amigos Medical Center Gait Analysis Tool. This is a common tool that we like to introduce to students. This tool allows the breakdown of a gait pattern into the following body components. We can look at the, start with just identifying what is going at the trunk, the pelvis, the hip, the knee, the ankle, and the toes. Within each of those components, we can further break down the walking pattern into weight acceptance, single limb support, and swing limb advancement. When we break that further down, for example, in weight accept acceptance, we would be thinking about initial contact. And as we read this column in the black, the areas uh, will not be impacted at initial co in contact, but we will be looking at the foot, such as forefoot contact and foot flat contact during that initial contact part of the gait cycle. There's several ways that one can approach this document. I typically like to start at the trunk and identify what's going on with each stage. Um, so I take the trunk and I say what's happening at weight, single limb support, and swing limb advance. Other individuals like to just look at initial contact and it go all the way through the cycle. Um, and so Lynn, I'd like to know as we go through this together, what would be your preference as a method for an analyzing somebody's gait? So it is not the way that it's written on this paper, but the way that I, it makes most sense to me is actually to start down at the toes and go all the way across through each uh, phase of gait and then kind of work my way back up um, through the ankle and knee and all the way to the trunk. Okay, we will uh, look at these together. Okay, one more time. Thank you. <laughs> What's your oldest daughter's name? We cannot see her toes, so what would you like to do about that? 
Um, so, I mean, if I was actually with the patient, I might see what it looked like when she walked without shoes on. Um, but I think from this view, um, I mean, I can't really tell where the toes are doing. So we could kind of skip the toes and move up to the ankle. All right, let's see what's going on with the ankle. And I think that's a really critical piece here, what's going on with the ankle. First of all, uh, what would you describe her forefoot contact as? The, um, in terms of what her foot's doing, it seems kind of everted and plantar flexed. Um, in terms of a forefoot, I think that's a little bit harder to be clear on some of this video. Okay, I would agree. So then I would consider, would you consider the next term um, foot flat contact? Do you think? I think so. I think it's more foot flat than forefoot. Good. Or how about, I mean, so we've kind of have these different terms that are here. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think we have a foot slap? You know, what would be the difference between a foot flat and a foot slap? So I feel like the foot flat is more just the entire foot hits the ground at the same time, whereas the slap is almost that like heel and then that quick um, drop because of the lack of eccentric control, um, which to me, it looks more like it kind of all hits without that extra slap. Agree. And I think it changes depending on if we're on the treadmill or on the ground. Um, mm -hmm. So I, 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 as she's coming back, it is very hard to see. But either way, we would say that we um, definitely, if we were to relate, relate this to the muscle function, we have impaired um, ankle dorsiflexion. If you wanted to uh, confirm that, what would you do? To see if she had some dorsiflexion? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we could manual muscle test that right. or, I mean, yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Let's just see if she has dorsiflexion. She might have it. We just don't see it in her functional analysis. What about the toe off and the push off? Any problems during uh, swing or uh, end of swing? Um, I would say during swing, she doesn't ever get that same dorsiflexion. She's still plantar flexed throughout. Um, yeah. Still looking at the ankle. I think she does get some like her foot goes wide too at the very beginning of swing to kind of help her out going around, which I guess would be eversion. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's um, at the foot or above? Let's look at it again. Where do you think that's happening from? Hip or, hip or ankle? Um, to me, it looks like there's a little bit of both. I think there's clearly some coming out at the hip, but I don't know. Okay. So um, how would you want to differentiate that? So you're asking eversion, mm -hmm. um, especially on an individual mm -hmm. post-stroke, um, who we know has, you know, that kind of uh, synergy pattern. Um, right. How would you differentiate that? I don't know. Okay. So if we're not sure if it's coming from the hip or the ankle, we would still go put her into a dorsiflexion and see if she actually truly has eversion of the foot. Because mm -hmm. um, okay. I don't actually think she has any, uh, too much motion in that ankle, especially to show, to, to, to be everters. And I think it's all coming from the hip. Um, and you okay. see it a little bit more here. Um, so that ankle to me doesn't have a lot yeah. of dorsiflexion or eversion. And it's a little bit clearer in this image. You almost see it um, inverting. Yep. Okay. Good. Okay. And does she have any um, toe off? Um, I ha I don't notice any toe off. She kind of just uses the hip and the knee to lift it up. Yep. Agreed. So, I mean, this is a big area that we needed to work on. She's not wearing a brace because she doesn't want to wear an AFO. Um, and I think we can capitalize on this ability to get the ankle a little bit more strength. Um, she's mm -hmm. not unsafe necessarily. We might not like it, 
but if we can get a little bit more dorsiflexion and plantar flexion, that would be a great tool. All right, excellent. So let's go up the chain and now, and let's look at the knee. So knee is nice because we only got a few directions, flexion, extension, mm -hmm. and then uh, some of our other little weird things that happen. So let's think about, um, does she have limited flexion? So she doesn't flex a lot, but I don't know that that's limited or that's a strength. And it's hard to tell from this front and back view, but when she gets on the treadmill, it kind of looks like she's got a little bit of wobble um, at that loading response. She doesn't quite get all the way extended. Uh, I don't see any hyperextension, do you? Mm-mm. Okay. Any valgus or varus complaint? Um, I think it looks like her knee does go, does move some, but I don't know if that's more from the hip motion. Yeah, um, I feel like watching as she goes away, it, it doesn't seem to stay straight, but I think that's hip, not knee. Right. I think it's coming from the hip again. Up to the hip. Yeah, I think, again, there's limited flexion happening. Um, and so where is she getting her both flexion? With the, where is she getting her flexion from, Lynn? to get the limb forward? Um, she's going some external rotation and abduction of the hip to kind of pick her leg up. <laughs> right. The advancement mm -hmm. is coming from external rotation uh, and mild uh, abduction to clear. Mm -hmm. Excellent. To clear the foot. Okay. And I think she's also, um, one of the terms that I like to use is called on mask. Everything is just kind of the trunk and pelvis are all, you can see it here really well. She is moving everything forward together. There's no separation. Um, how about her extension? Always tricky. So I think she's getting enough extension if we were talking about just the normal gait pattern. I think um, she stays in extension even when she's going to take her next step. I feel like she doesn't ever, like, she doesn't get quite all the way into flexion sometimes. I think it's, it's, I see that more on the treadmill than on the walking, but yeah. it seems like that, like, never kind of catches up all the way. Okay, so I, I see pretty good extension, right? I mean, not, not great, mm -hmm. but that's actually chilly, some hip extension happening, which is exciting. Mm -hmm. And then I think what you're saying, um, I'm not sure if that's the hip or the pelvis with okay. that extension. Do you see the difference? Okay. So now I think the pelvis is um, backwardly rotated. All right, so now we're up to the pelvis. Sometimes mm -hmm. she hikes her hip and sometimes she, she tilts the pelvis. I don't see it as consistent, which I think is interesting. I think you're right on that excessive um, rotation in the ant anterior posterior plane. Occasional hip hike and occasional posterior retraction. And then let's do the last one of the trunk. So to me, the trunk doesn't move a lot um, in this view. I think it moves more when she's on the treadmill, which I thought was weird. Mm -hmm. um, she definitely has that forward lean as she's turning. You can tell that she kind of gets, I don't know, if off balance is the right word. Yeah, I think um, I don't see a huge deviation here, even with that arm and that um, mm -hmm. flexion synergy. It's not, it's not a strong mm -hmm. trunk. Um, but I don't see huge deviations on it.
in summary, what do you say, what area do you think is the most impaired? I would say that dorsiflexion, the ankle. Um, I mean, and I know the, the hip versus the pelvis trying to work towards separating those out and getting those kind of using those better, I think is a good possibility for um, intervention too. Great, I would agree. Working on just dissociating that hip uh, and pelvis so that they're not just working on mass uh, in one plane would be a great place to start. Um, and so we even came up with some ideas what we wanna measure. We need to look at our strengths. We need to look at her dorsiflexion strength and hamstring strength. And um, we might wanna look at her glute strength as we were discussing that hip. Mm -hmm. um, so now we have a plan of what we're gonna do in the clinic. Uh, 